Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be taking you through how to set up this weekly spread. And by weekly spread I mean series of weekly spreads as you can probably see from the Dutch doors we have here. In order to actually show you how to set this up though, we're going to have to step back in time to before I set it up myself. Ooh spooky, it's Jess from the past. Though I mean that kind of goes without saying because I have to film this and then I have to edit it and then I have to uploaded to YouTube, so yeah. In terms of materials, just looking at that quickly, I have a bunch of different pens, including my Tombow Jewel Brush markers, my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens, the Statler Triplus Fineliners, a white Uniball Signo pen, and a white Acrylograph. I also have some cutting tools, including a craft knife, my scissors, and my Creative Memories Corner Rounder. I have my pencil and eraser, some different pastel washi tapes, my double-sided tape roller, and some black dog grid note paper from my Archer and Olive Neapolitan notepad. As a side tip, any time that I have off cuts from anything I'm doing in my journal, so whether it be things like making Dutch doors or just using part of the notepad paper, I like to keep all of those off cuts for later, just in case I have a size or shape that I can use later on. So if you've seen my plan with me for September, you know that my theme for the month ahead is very much this kind of pastel clouds theme with a lot of layers of the washi tape and the clouds one on top of another. So in order to start the setup of these weekly spreads, I really need to work from top to bottom. So everything that's going to be the topmost layer has to go in first, at least in terms of anything I need to draw in. So to follow that, I'm going to start by ruling in the boxes that I have sketched in here and down the bottom. Each of these boxes is just four centimeters in width because I find that size works well for me. I also apologize for some of the lighting changes we have at the start of this video. Working in my new office, I haven't quite gotten the lighting right yet. So you'll see every so often when I turn the notebook or if I turn to a certain page, everything goes to a really blue tint. You'll see here, this is me noticing that my lighting is off, but after this I tried to reconfigure my setup and get the lighting back to a more reasonable consistency. In this step I'm also drawing the two checklists that we have on either side of the spread, and I'm also drawing the priority boxes that I have in the top left. The idea for this Dutch door layout is that those priorities and the tasks for each of those checklists are going to be viewable from any page of the Dutch door. Continuing with that idea of working top to bottom with the drawn elements, now I'm going to go and start putting in my clouds, because these ones I draw in. After that we'll then have a look at the washi tape. You can see I've already sketched out the clouds here in terms of their placement, and I'm just going to use my Tombow to go and fill those in, using those same kind of circular motions that I used when I set up the rest of my monthly pages. By doing little circles of colour with my Tombows, this means that my clouds end up with a kind of textured look, and I don't have to worry about the issue of going over spaces with the Tombow multiple times. If you've ever tried to draw a solid, consistent block of colour with the Tombows, you'll know that anywhere where you've gone over with the pen multiple times ends up darker than the spaces where you haven't. Because I know this is an issue, doing these little circles of colour is just a helpful workaround. So I'm intentionally going over sections multiple times, rather than trying to avoid it. In this step I'm also going to be putting in the moon using my circle stencil from Stettler. This stencil is a super handy tool, I would totally recommend getting one. As with every piece of equipment I used in this setup, you can find it linked in the description box below. To fill in the moon I also used that circling technique to give it a textured look. Now as I have the colour of my clouds in, I'm going to go and do some outlining with the white gel pen, just anywhere that those clouds meet. So like here, here, also where the clouds meet the moon here, and then down in these two sections as well. This is purely a style choice, you don't have to do this, I just think it helps to find the clouds better from each other and from that moon. You could of course add some extra details to the clouds in the same way, maybe by adding some little swirls or just defining where the little bumps in the cloud are, things like that. Clouds in and it's time to do the washi tape. Now as you can see, I have sketched out where I'm intending on putting washi tape. You do not have to do this, it's just that I know that if I didn't sketch it out, it would take me a ridiculously long time to try and figure out where to place the washi. If you do sketch your lines out with where to put the washi, please make sure to erase them before you lay the washi over, especially if you're using a particularly light or transparent washi like I am. As I said in my monthly setup video, layering washi like this, or what I'm going to call washi collage, isn't really a strength of mine, but I think that because I've chosen a colour palette where all of the washies work really well together, it's a little bit more forgiving. I do try and make sure I have an even distribution of each of the colours though. With the washi tape in place, I'm now going to go and trim off any of the excess washi that goes into my boxes. So for instance here, this section here, in there, etc. Now. I will say, 
This is sharp. Please be careful if you're using a craft knife. You also want to make sure you don't apply too much pressure because you don't want to cut through your page. But you also just want to be sure where is the blade at all times so you don't hurt yourself. Yes. For cutting away the excess washi, I made sure to run my craft knife along the outside of the black line for each of the boxes. This just helped to make it look more like the boxes were actually sitting on top of the washi tape. Of course, another way you could do this would be something similar to what I did on my monthly log, where you put all of the decoration down first and then have cut out boxes that you stick on top of the decoration, whether they be white boxes like I've got here or craft paper boxes like I have in my monthly log. I've decided I want just a little bit more washi tape here. Just because this space was looking kind of bare. There we go. I said it before, but please do be careful with your craft knife. Don't apply too much pressure. You want to just cut through the washi tape, not through the paper. Now it's time to add in some titles. I'm going to start with these boxes down here, which are to-do lists that I'm going to have for YouTubing, school, home, and personal tasks. For those ones, I'm just going to write the headers in with my Stetler Tri Plus fine liners. These six boxes up here are going to be days of the week boxes. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend. In terms of numbering those, rather than writing them in, I'm actually going to use stickers. I have this sticker book here, which I picked up from Spotlight. And in here we have some numbers for the days of the month. Of course, you can just write this in. It'll take less time, but I thought the stickers were cute. In terms of other headers that I'll need, I'll need the header across here that tells me what week I'm going to be in, and I'll also need the header here for my weekly checklist. For those ones, I'm going to be using these black pieces of paper that I cut out from my notepad, and I'm going to stick them in with my double-sided tape roller. Each of those black boxes for the title in the middle are one and a half centimeters by one and a half centimeters. So in terms of the dot grid, three boxes across and three boxes up. And to write on top of the black paper, I'm using the white acrylograph in the 0.7 millimeter nib size. And as a reminder, if you are ordering products from Archer and Olive, you can use my code JASHIKARIN10 for 10% off your order. Now as those titles are in, I know where I can put in my sparkles with my extra small size Pit Artist Pen. The sparkles are my favourite way to fill any kind of blank space in my journal. So just using a variety of little stars, maybe some little crosses, little circles, and it also helps to tie in the star washi tape that I'm using. So here we have the first week, but now we need to make the Dutch doors for our additional weeks. I'm not gonna lie, I have actually gone in and cut the rest of them out and filled in all the decoration, because as I said, this style of decoration takes me a very long time. So we're gonna cut the Dutch doors out now. The idea that I have for this layout is that the checklists that I have here, I wanna be able to see the tasks on every single week. So rather than having to write the same task list out multiple times on each page, I'm going to have Dutch doors in this corner and in the top section so that I can see what's on that top part here, but also on the side sections here. So in terms of cutting, we're going to start with this corner here for which I'm going six squares in and 17 squares up. I'm just going to cut this out using my scissors and then I'm going to round the corners with my corner rounder. This is the first time I've done a Dutch door like this, and I've been wanting to do it for such a long time, so I'm excited to see how it works for me. So you can see that from this Dutch door, I can see this reset checklist, and then if we flip it over, I can see my weekly to-do list as well on the other side. Now it's time to cut away this top part though, because I also want to be able to see what I'm going to have here. To do this, I'm just going to cut across the page with my scissors, and then I'm going to use my craft knife to remove the top section here carefully. We don't want to damage the binding of the book because we don't want your journal to fall apart. It's also worth noting that you don't have to cut as close to the spine as I am here. I'm mostly confident in my ability to not totally ruin my journal, but if you cut a little further out, you can just secure the small piece of paper that remains with double-sided tape or washi tape. So we've got the Dutch doors done now and they're looking pretty cute. I'm gonna go and write in my reset checklist and then work in this top section here. So if we flip to the back page, you can see I've already penciled in what these steps are, so writing those in. Then I'm gonna write in these faint pencil numbers you can see. And after that, we'll work on the title. If you were curious about the steps that I have in my weekly reset, I do have a separate video for that one. That can be found in the cards above or in the description box below, along with any other relevant videos. For instance, my playlist for weekly plan with me's and my other playlist for Dutch door layouts. 
Also, if there are any videos in particular you'd like to see from me, please do leave them in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for new video ideas. This section is going to be for recording my dinners for the month, so I'm going to have a meals title up here. I think the decoration I'm going to put behind this will just be washi, kind of like what I've got here for the reset and for the to-do sections. I will say that once this header is in, I'm really chuffed with how these weeklies turned out. Question of the day for you guys though, what's something that you're looking forward to for the month ahead? For me, one thing will be using these spreads. As I said, this is a style of Dutch door that I've wanted to do for quite a while, so actually seeing it come together is something exciting. Adding in those final touches though, and then our weekly logs are completed. So you can see in terms of the monthly sections, we have the priority section, the meal log, a to-do list for things to be done on a weekly basis, and my reset checklist. And those can be seen on every page given the Dutch doors that we have in the bottom corners and at the top. A bit more of a tutorial style video for you guys today, but hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do make sure to give this one a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity and personal development. Until next time, bye!